Hey y'all, it's David Decker coming back at you, and today I'm going to be talking about absent players. What to do as a gaming group or a game master when one of your players, uh, one or more of your players, is absent from the game. So you all assemble, you know, uh, heroes, assemble! And you're looking around, and you're like, where the fuck is Rick? Rick's late. Rick's very late. You know, you might wait for a while. You can eat some pizza, drink some Mountain Dew, which seems to be the role player's uh, beverage of choice for some reason. And you call Rick and you're like, Rick, why aren't you at the game? Where are you? What's up? Are you in a car accident? Are you dead? Then why aren't you at the game? Oh, I see. I see. Fuck you, Rick. And you hang up the phone. That's how my conversations go. You can see what a polite guy I am. Uh, anyone who knows me knows not to be offended if, <laughs> if I tell you fuck off, because uh, I'm joking about it. I just speak harshly. Uh, the people on the forums don't know that at first, so I get in trouble with the moderators. <laughs> Gotta censor myself uh, online. But the bottom line is Rick's not going to be there, or whoever's not going to be there. Uh, I just pick Rick because, uh, because Rick wasn't there last session. And that's pretty much what happened last session. Usually, uh, usually it's James in my group, uh, the sleepy bugbear. So what do you do? Well, ask yourself a couple questions as a GM. First of all, do I have anything prepared tonight? Um, because I often don't because I have a sandbox style. And if the answer is yes, then you can, you can move on to your next question. If the answer is no, just run without him. His character is not there. Or if, if his character clearly is there, you can take over the character. Or you can uh, you can have him kidnapped, mysteriously disappear. You can have him be a doppelganger and, and he didn't even know it. There's a variety of things you can do. But if there's nothing prepared, you can definitely run. No problem. Now, if you do have something prepared, ask yourself, does the missing player's character have a role to play in this prepared scene? If the answer is uh, yes, you probably can't run because you don't want that the player to miss uh, a big scene with his character. You know, it'll it'll just be to the detriment of the game. Some people will say, "Oh, just punish him by having him miss a cool scene." Um, and I, I don't have a problem with him missing cool scenes that his character's not in. His character is in a cool scene. I'm not running that scene without him. It's not happening. Because he'll, you know, it's, it's just not cool. It's not cool. Now, if his character doesn't have a role to play in that scene, uh, then you can run. You know, again, his character's missing. Uh, dis disappeared. A doppelganger. Uh, take a charm. Taken over by a demon. Whatever. Uh, so you can still run without them. Uh, another ground rule I have is uh, I won't run with just two players. I have to have three players plus myself as a GM. So as long as you can hit that sweet spot of three, you're good. Uh, I think once, because uh, I run with six players, and I think once three of them called in sick. But we could still run with the other three. And it was a great session. It, it can be so much fun to change up the dynamics and say, oh, I'm used to six-person tactics. I'm used to having, you know, two fighters and two wizards and a cleric and a thief or whatever. I'm used to doing it this way, A, B, C. If you take out B, you just got A and C, you're like, oh, i got to try something new, something different, something exciting. So I love when, when players are absent, uh, as long as we can still run. Because it changes the dynamic. Everyone else, their spotlight grows because they're not sharing it with so many people. You get to change dynamics. Like if uh, myself and Josh, our characters all always have banter and talk to each other. So if Josh is absent, my character has to start uh, talking to other party members more than I usually do. And I usually do. I'm not saying I only talk to Josh. But I'll have to talk to them more so I can help shine the spotlight onto them since Josh is gone. 
or whoever is gone. Shine that spotlight on someone else. You know, usually my go-to would be like uh, like Aaron. Shine that spotlight on Aaron. Uh, because uh, at least in our last game, the, the, the game master is jacking Aaron out of the spotlight. He's like, Aaron's like the guy. He's trying to get on stage and do his little number. And then the big hook comes in from off stage and tries to pull him, tries to pull him off. And Aaron's like jumping out of the hook. And uh, he's trying all kinds of gimmicks to escape the hook. Uh, because Aaron was playing illusionist. And you know what illusions don't do? Damage. And this GM was all about the damage and the power game, combat, kill, stat blocks, loot them, monsters, uh, you know, five foot hexes, hallways, and traps. And he's very old, what I would call old school. Uh, game master and uh, Aaron's trying to get this you know character development illusion interesting scenes and political man manipulations and machinations uh, which I also that's that's also my gambit too I, I do all that stuff as well um, but Aaron was really getting just ground down by the GM like Aaron was getting upset about it I was having the same problems, but I wasn't really getting upset about it. Uh, because I'm, I'm, a I'm a stronger role player than Aaron, so I had some other tools to go to. It still wasn't a good situation, don't get me wrong. But uh, it was especially harsh for Aaron because he's trying to improve. And the GM is it's just a bad environment. You can't improve those skills under this GM. You know, I, I was, you know, having to draw on all of my skills just to get a little of what I wanted. But uh, anyway, back to the, the, the actual topic of the video when someone's absent. You change up that dynamic in great ways. Uh, another scenario that springs to mind is in our Legends of the Seven Sands game, the players... I'm going to rescue some gladiators from a gladiatorial arena. And Josh's character played a key role in this rescue. And then Josh was absent. So I'm like, well, we can actually still run this without him. Uh, you know, so they, they had to find out how to rescue, I think it was like 100 gladiators <laughs> with, with, uh, with only the, the four players who showed up that day and their skill sets and it was tremendously fun and interesting and it was much more challenging than it would have been otherwise and it was a great session you know one of one of the best sessions uh, in Legends of the Seven Sands and Josh wasn't even there for it so changing the party dynamic can be great um, on another related topic which I'll ramble about briefly because I do love to ramble. You can also bring in guest star players, bring in a, a friend to play a, a uh, non-player character for a session, or you could bring in co-GMs and give them a list of NPCs to run. Uh, I do this, you know, I've, I've run this uh, typically if we're doing a big ball or a banquet or a big meeting of, of power players. When you get a whole bunch of NPCs in a room, I'll take the major ones that that I'll and but I'll I'll try to find a, desperately try to find a co GM uh, so he can run uh, minor characters and I give them tremendous leeway to make the minor characters whatever they want. So they still have a lot of power as a GM uh, and they can make up NPCs on the fly as well. Uh, I, I often have problems finding a code GM. You know, I post an ad up on Meetup seven days in advance, and I send out an email uh, to all my buddies who uh, I think could handle it. You know, seven days in advance. But I, I, the last couple times I tried to find a code GM, I just couldn't find one. Which is sad. The other scenario I bring in the code GM for is mass combat, big battles. Uh, we did, I didn't have one for the Battle of Tortuga in Legends of the Seven Sands, but I did have one for the Battle of Pisgia. Uh James came in, and James had previously been in the game as a player, but he quit uh, because he hates Aaron. He, they, he just, 
really surprisingly despises Aaron. I I was shocked. I knew he had problems with him, <laughs> but I didn't know they were that bad. Uh, so we brought James in as a co-GM, and I'm like, okay, you run all the armies. Or I think I gave him, like, you run the, the bad guy armies. I'll run the good guy armies and the major uh, NPCs. And he had, again, like six captains of the enemy army uh, to, to run. It made it so much easier and smoother for me as a GM uh, to have that help for this big scene. And, uh, I mean, one of the problems was James hates Aaron so much that the, all of the enemy army, armies start marching towards Aaron and all the troops are just swarming in. And Aaron's just standing there in the middle of this, and he's trying to fight them off. And uh, they just, they're just they just trying to pancake him at the expense of all other targets. Because James is playing the enemy armies, and uh, James hates Aaron. So I'm like, oh my god, what have I done? <laughs> uh, shockingly, Aaron survived. Aaron, uh, Aaron is known for having his, player, his characters die. I, he went through... At least six players, at least six characters in Legends of the Seven Sands, uh, possibly twelve. He, he was dying a lot, and in this session, and I wasn't trying to kill him, you know, I, I really I wasn't. But in this session, James is trying actively to kill Aaron, and now Aaron kicks it into gear that he must survive this session, and he did. <laughs> He was dodging everything James threw at him, cutting down the captains. I mean, Aaron's character was on fire that night. He was the man, the man with a plan. So that was a great session uh, that I had a co-GM for. Um, you know, I don't know if, uh, if it, all the ingredients were exactly right because there was that horrible metagaming, but it turned out excellently uh, and even James was you know James wasn't getting mad about it James laughing about it too as Aaron's just like you know bring it on bring it on what you got and uh, James laughing about it. he's like oh my god how is he doing this so it was tremendously fun uh, both in and out of game so I encourage everyone to switch up the dynamics get co uh, GMs get additional uh, guest stars. I guest starred for in, in Tyson's game a couple weeks ago. Uh, injected a lot of flavor into an NPC for him. And don't be afraid when someone's absent to run without them as well. Because that, that too changes the dynamic. Make it smaller. Make it larger. Play with it. Get get different uh, different things. Our party actually just split in Return of the Rune Fangs. Half of them are trapped in the sewers, and half are still up in the streets. And we might do separate sessions. I might do one session for the guys in the sewers, and one session for the guys out of the sewers. So keep it fresh, keep it new, keep it exciting, push the pace. All the things I've been saying this whole time, and I'm going to say again and again until your game is the A game, and you are the MVP of your RPG scene. This is your gaming guru signing out.